This is Frank Prattle here on uh, whatever radio station we're broadcasting out of today, Neighborhood Public Radio. I have uh, some special guests today, and I'm getting waved at, called Two Naughty Boys. Hello. Hello, I'm Dan. I'm JD. And they are a, a bondage, a power bondage duo. Power bondage. From okay. the San Francisco Bay Area. We're going to be interviewing them today. So, uh, I don't know, who wants to start? Well, okay, okay, well, let's see, Rochambeau here. Rochambeau, okay, I'm holding okay, it. And right, I'm right. an impartial judge. Okay. Right. One, two, three. Total bullshit. What is that? Total bullshit. Anyway, okay. this is great radio. I exactly. Know. I think I, I'll Sorry. go first. Okay, I guess. okay. Um, yeah, Dan and I have been doing this now for, what, about seven years, almost? Yep. Um, we are two naughty boys. Uh, effectively, what we do is we teach rope bondage workshops uh, throughout the Bay Area and beyond. Um, we've been doing this uh, singly, or sort of r tying rope individually, uh, for many years past seven. Uh, I got my start, this is JD, uh, back in the, um, basically in the uh, dot com, I mean the um, explosion of, uh, of bondage websites that happened in the mid-90s. Uh, worked for a few local uh, websites and then branched from there to teaching uh, small private workshops. Uh, then Dan and I met one day in the late 90s. At a uh, at a rope was it? Yeah, yeah it was a, it was a model idea. search for a uh, for a website that was looking for uh, for young dollies that look good in rope, and uh, we were independently hired to tie these girls up, and we were tying beautiful women up, and we looked at each other's work, and we realized. Uh, Hey, I like your girlfriend better than my girl. Oh, no, no. Exactly. I'm sorry, that must have been. swapped him. That was not it. Was so, we had the same aesthetic in our rope bondage styles, and so uh, decided to sort of join forces and take what had been something that uh, most people only saw online and a few lucky uh, few would uh, experience in private workshops and bring it to the mass audience. So. Yeah, you know, one of the things that we always complain about when we are – this is Dan talking, and I, uh, I started – I guess I started bondage earlier on by uh, by actually teaching uh, uh, mountaineering and rock climbing, so I had a lot of knots in my back pocket, so to speak, and uh, then met a few. Uh, had, had a had my first kinky girlfriend and wanted to get tied up and and uh, say, oh, I know how to do that. And then it just kind of uh, blossomed from there. And, and like JD, I too was independently hired to uh, to uh, rig models for bondage shoots for like Eric Kroll and other fetish photographers and such. And then JD and I met. We had similar styles, and we realized that uh, we both had the same complaint about a lot of rope bondage that you see in magazines or in the in the infant days of the web that it was pretty sloppy and uh, wasn't very attractive and certainly didn't seem very safe. And the fact is... is Hold on, hold on just a sec. Yeah. When you talk about bondage and it not being... Um, when it being sloppy, when you look at somebody else's work and you're like, ah, it just doesn't just doesn't sit right with you. I mean, like for somebody who doesn't really know about bondage, like what what would that look like? What is, what is sloppy bondage? A lot of it, a lot of it's jerry rigged. Um, basically, you got, you, let's say you have a couple situation where somebody wants to incorporate a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of excitement into into their evening. And so they decide to engage in some bondage. Um, most, more often than not, people are coming from a, a place of uh, sort of uh, ambitious, um, uh, sort of overstepping. They don't, they don't have the background, they don't have the information to tie skillfully and safely. So they end up tying really tight, or uh, they may wrap and wrap and wrap uh, a, in, in a, and create a situation where if the person wants the ties adjusted or needs to be untied quickly, that cannot happen. Um, and so that lack of that lack of knowledge can lead to an over you know an overstepping, which uh, more often than not pushes people off. You know you have a lot of people you speak to and you say, well, I had my first bondage experience, and you know the fellow the, or the girl left the room, and I felt very vulnerable. I felt I felt like they weren't really focused on me, or I felt like it was unsafe. And I still I can't feel my hands. Yeah, or they they <laughs> lost circulation. You know they they. They seriously impacted their own, you know, health and safety through their lack of knowledge. And so, what we're trying to do is give people all the tools to incorporate rope bondage uh, in a safe way, in a sexy way, and in a skillful way. We often jokingly tell people that they don't go to our bondage workshops to, you know, necessarily learn about safety and all these other things. We're going to show them and teach them about that. What they're really there for is to learn how to look cool, and we call it the rule of cool. Um, you know, people. What exactly is the rule? <laughs> the rule of cool is that when people are engaged in any kind of intimate exchange, they want to feel um, capable. They want to feel sexy. Um, they want to feel seen in a positive light. 
and turned on. And they want to know that the person that they're engaging with is equally turned on and feeling sexy. And so when you maintain that, you uh, feel cool. And uh, the person who's being uh, the subject of your bondage is feeling you know, connected and um, and seen in a positive way. We, this may sound a little hippie, and I, I want it to, because ultimately we often focus the group when we're teaching our workshops to tell people that you're really not tying rope, uh, you're tying people. And unless you have a core connection to the person you're tying, unless you understand the dynamics between um, two loving people or, you know, or an intimate exchange of agreement uh, with safe words and communication, and an awareness uh, of the sensibilities of the person you're tying, uh, then you won't look cool and your situation will not be uh, fun and ultimately you may turn someone else off to bondage. Yeah, I, be I believe Jerry Garcia said that, as a matter of fact. It was, <laughs> I thought it was Mickey Hart, maybe. That way, or oh, Mickey Rourke, actually. Mickey Rourke, yeah. Now, yeah. Now, now we're getting closer. Anyway. Later, Mickey Rourke. That's right. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, the, the interesting thing about rope bondage is that uh, a lot of it's such a popular fantasy for people. It's one of the one of the leading uh, fantasies that people want to incorporate into lovemaking. And a lot of people, when they try it, it's a uh, they just don't know how to go about doing it, and they get nervous, and so they lose that. Uh, uh, well, they lose their wood, among other things, trying to figure out what to do. And the other thing is they they lose their their cool, and by and and maybe start to stammer and and. Uh, um, lose control of their bodily yeah. functions and things like <laughs> they, that. And they hesitate. A lot of times people have their ego attached to it, and so you have someone who, you know, like let's say you have a situation where you presented like a bondage exchange, uh, you've tied your partner up, and they want to modify the tie. They're like, it's too tight. Well, if the person's ego is wrapped into the circumstances, they may feel that, you know, there's sort of a personal attack. They feel like, oh, man, I'm not, I'm not as cool as I thought it was. This isn't going as well as I thought it was. They get all flustered and worked up about it um, because they're trying to sort of pull out of their brainscape uh, something they, they simply do not know. And so if we give, them, we give them the tools to have a game plan, to go in there with a fluid set of ties that are sensual, exposing for the for sexual you know uh, exchanges and uh, and look good and so the person doesn't have to think about the rope as much they can think about the person and be present to the sensual exchange yes. so we're giving them the tools to sort of not have to get all bogged down about the rope uh, right. by coming to a workshop and learning some basic pieces uh, and some basic ways of using it